Welcome back to the Overland Nevada YouTube channel. Hey, thanks for watching even this, what, three seconds, four seconds so far. Um, we have a few other videos. Uh, you should check them out. Maybe, let's see, I don't know, on this side or on this, this side, I think. We'll see. I'm an idiot. I know that. And I'm just an idiot doing stuff to old trucks. That's what we do. Um, Overland Nevada, we're idiots that do stuff to old trucks, repair old trucks, or go play with old trucks out in the desert. Anyways, um, my name's Aaron, and this is going to be the first video of maybe three videos, possibly two, put together over painting the entirety of your vehicle. Now, I've never done this before, so I'm not expressing to be an expert by any means of, of the word. However, I have done a lot of reading, um, I've done a lot of internet searching, and I kind of got a handle on temperatures, type of paint, um, how many stages, paint stages I want to use, uh, humidity levels, spray guns, dryers, filters, blah, 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 all that stuff. So I kind of have a decent handle on maybe enough information to get myself in trouble. But I'm going to paint my 1999 Toyota 4Runner SR5. It originally came from the factory with a gloss finish paint job. Nothing special, just your SR5 package, so it was uh, gloss on gloss, black. No, uh, no trim pieces like the Limiteds, uh, where it was two-tone, just gloss black. Um, a few years back, I don't know if you can kind of tell in the picture, but I'll, I'll zoom in here shortly just to kind of go over why I'm doing this. Um, but a few years back, I got this truck painted um, with a matte finish. Uh, like a lot of Toyota owners, the hood and the, uh, the pillars around the windshield started to oxidize really bad. And so instead of having the vehicle look like I just don't take care of it, I wanted to get it painted. And on a whim, at the paint store um, or the body shop, I decided, I saw on the, the, the thing that you, they offered flat paint. So I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. I like that. I'm going to do that. So I paid to get the, the flat finish done. And it looked really good. They did a great job, especially for the money that they, they charged me. Um, it wasn't perfect, but that's okay. I wasn't looking for perfection. I was just looking for a good paint job, something that doesn't look like I don't care for my vehicle. Now, obviously, like I take it out. I go out in the desert. I get stuck. You know, get on some tight trails. I get pin striping. I get scratches. Um, so far, I haven't gotten a dent, but I probably will, um, and that's okay. There's a difference between you know taking it out and using it and getting some some road rash that way, and then there's just like the look of not taking care of it. And so my OCD has this differenti um, differentiating between the two, and I want to be on the side that you know it looks like it's taken care of, but I'm not too worried about uh, road rash, and that's why. I feel like I can take on this paint job because here I am, um, like I said, I'm, I'm not looking for a perfect paint job, but I am um, looking for something that, uh, you know, that looks like I'm taking care of the vehicle. So I'm not worried about um, scratches and things like that. And those will come and, you know, they are what they are. Anyway, so why am I getting it done? I just got the paint, I just got the paint job done and it's only been a few years. Well, to answer that question, I recently had a detailer come by and started using, I used a new guy for the first time and um, goes without saying I won't be using him again, but um, he talked me into a flat finish protectant. What I assumed was, I've heard of other you know detailers talk about, it's a, it's a protectant designed for flat finishes because you, you can't buff them. And so I assumed it was some light wipe on, wipe off wax finish, something similar that I i had been using regularly that I got from um, Chemical Brothers over in California. Really good product, um, but I was just using it uh, casually, and so I wanted something a little bit more um, durable, maybe a little bit more on the professional side. Not to say that um, Chemical Brothers aren't professional, they probably are, I just wasn't using it to its potential most likely. Anyway, so um, he talked him into this, and then cut two, 30 minutes later when I come outside to see how it was going, I found him buffing the side of my truck out with um, like uh, finishing you know, like this gritty sandy um, uh, correction polish. He's buffing the side of my truck. He's got the front passenger door and the rear passenger door pretty much done. Turned into this like pseudo 
matte finish slash um, untaken care of uh, single stage paint finish is, is what it looked like when it was done and, and so I was hoping if you did the whole thing that same way it wouldn't look bad but unfortunately it just looked worse because obviously there are places you cannot just buff to that type of finish you know uh, molding points uh, the door jams the handles stuff like that you can't you can't buff that with a buffer and, and get a consistent finish so long story short um, this guy ruined my paint job and so I was stuck with well do I leave it as is um, or do I take it back to a shop and have them respray it I probably could do it cheap since it was um, a flat finish they wouldn't have to do a lot of um, sanding or priming or anything like that to get there instead I decided I'm gonna take on the challenge of painting it myself so here I am, video one, and I wanted to kind of go over why, if anybody else is in this boat, um, maybe they want to take it on, and then I'm going to talk about real quick product. Um, now um, when you search for paint on the internet, there are uh, numerous websites that sell auto water paint all the way to um, places as, you know, as, as low budget and and cheap as AutoZone. Uh, Summit Racing seemed to be the website that had the most amount of uh, product, but I did stumble across a website that carried kits. Um, Trinity 1945 Auto Paint Suppliers. Um, I know nothing about them except that they were looking, they had what I was looking for. They had kits already put together that gave you the quantities needed to uh, finish. You know, they, they told you how much you'd need for, you know, a large truck, car, blah, blah, blah. And so it gave me what I needed when I bought that kit. It was a, you know, it was affordable. I mean, auto body paint is, is not cheap per se um, when you compare to like, you know, rattle can or even paint you put on your walls of your house. Um, so within reason of, you know, in relativity to other websites, uh, they were cost effective. I mean, they, they, obviously it's not cheap, but they weren't crazy expensive compared to other places. So, um, training 1945 is where I got this kit and it came with, um, the actual paint that I'll need for the job. And I am going to be, um, doing it in Viper Red, Viper Red. Coming from a black truck to Viper Red, I realize that there's going to be some um, issues that I'm going to face to, to complete that to make it look uh, halfway decent. Um, that will be hurdles, you know, like jamming it. Um, that will take time. Masking the doors off so where I can um, paint the inside of the the door jams and then as well as the actual body jams. Um, all that's going to take time, and uh, and for most people, it's probably not the the wisest decision, you know, like stick with the color you have is typically um, the the consensus when painting your vehicle. That way, you're, you 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 show less error or you show less issues when you finish, because you know you can see the cracks of the door jams. If you don't paint that well, um, it can just look silly. So I realize I'm taking on a very large project for someone that's never done it before but um, that's what I do I'm an idiot um, so it came with the paint then uh, like I already showed this can but it, it also came with the, uh, the clear coat and then it came with the, uh, the activators and the, uh, the hardeners needed to do the job um, so that's what came in the kit. Then the stuff, you know, accessories that you need to, you know, just do a job, um, they also sell. So like uh, I got some greasing wax remover, which I'll use over the entirety of the truck to, to make sure that it's prepped well. Um, these were stupid cheap. I mean, even compared to, you know, going to AutoZone or Home Depot to get these mixing cups, these were dumb cheap compared to what they sell them to at, at any other store. And so I bought 10. I'll only need maybe three, um, but I bought 10 for future stuff um, because it was so cheap to have them. Maybe this turns out well. We'll see. And somebody else nearby wants to do it to their truck too. And, you know, hey, I have the supplies. Let's do it. 
we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get the truck in and we'll do it. Um, yeah, also, uh, you know, I bought a bunch of these strainers as well. Um, I mean, these were just a few cents each. So I bought, uh, actually, the package, sorry, it came in a package of 10, and um, I think it was like a dollar or something. Like, it was, it was really cheap. And when you compare the price of these strainers, you know, again, at like Home Depot or, or an auto parts store, they're, they're pretty expensive per item, especially compared to this. Um, they also sell masking paper, which I bought a roll of the, the, the longer stuff. And I bought a roll of the shorter stuff, or I should say wider stuff and thinner stuff. Um, I have plenty of plastic that I'll be able to use, so I already have that. Bought some stirs, I have a respirator. Um, I, I, I bought a gun, I got the, the filters for the air compressor, the dryers for the air compressor. So I'm, I'm pretty much set. Um, video one is all about this kind of this initial process of why, what I'm using, and then. Here in a moment, I'm going to cut to um, you know the, the truck, let you see firsthand what I'm talking about. Um, one other thing, and if you're a Toyota owner, especially the the Tacomas and the Forerunners, if you're having an issue with that oxidation, um, check your your hood mat, the 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 material piece that sits between uh, it attaches to the bottom side of the hood, but it sits between the engine and the hood. Um, mine was disintegrating and so I'm sure that had a lot to play into why the uh, hood was oxidizing that and maybe a lack of care but um, I had a replacement a universal replacement of that as well and so um, as I get to that point I'll if, it, if it's a nice product and it works out well I'll bring it out and show it off and and uh, show you how I have it attached I'm hoping that will uh, mitigate the issue of any future oxidation so um, so we'll see. Um, so product, why? Let's look at the paint job. Okay, so as a, uh, see if I can get some decent angles on this uh, paint. Well, right here you can you can see um, left buffing marks and and it's you can see what's happened to the hood since um, since he's buffed it out. And this happened within days of him buffing it out. Um, and I know it's dirty right now and it's really gross, but part of that's because of um, how annoyed I was with what he did. And um, just knowing that I'm going to get to a point where I'm going to be painting it. So I've already got the molding off. I'm going to take the bumpers off and, and whatnot soon. But um, this is a good visual of what the paint used to look like and now it's kind of you can you can see with that reflection there kind of what it's turned into like i said kind of that pseudo matte finish like it's not a not very good so um as we roll around here we'll get another reflection you can see what's happened here um you can see that, that you know you see how shiny it was this is where he did most of his, his work and he actually you know for taking it from a flat to a to this kind of weird gloss he didn't do a bad job it's just how inconsistent it is around the rest of the truck so um so yeah i mean you can even see here um and uh, maybe it doesn't show up but i used to have a sticker right there and he just kind of bumped right around it um Long, you know, long story short, I'm pretty annoyed about about what he's done. But so I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna turn it viper red, and it is either going to be really awesome, really horrible, or really for my personality type, just hopefully it turns out um, okay. So yeah, it's in rough shape right now, but. Uh, We'll get there. We'll get the moldings back on, and it'll uh, it'll look really cool again one day. So there we go. Get another uh, look at uh, all the product here. We've got the uh, clear coat from Trinity 1945. The paint. We've got the uh, activator and the 
reducer and then the uh, wax remover then obviously the other items that may be needed to complete the job so uh, check back soon we'll have some more uh, videos of this happening um, and hopefully these videos turned out worth watching we'll see